Hello, and welcome to yet another exciting Bat Game report from the Batman Miniatures game 3rd edition. Uh, I'm Shield War 100, and today I'm pleased to be able to present to you a game between uh, Batman, using the Batman faction of course, and uh, the League of Assassins led by none other than Talia al Ghul. We usually go with Raish, but uh, today we're going with the Daughter of the Demon instead. Please check the description below for a, uh, an offer from the Top Hatted Hamster uh, web store where you can get 10% off your first or next order. And uh, yes, like I said, I'm not affiliated with them. I just thought it'd be nice to pass on the offer. And uh, yes, let's get on with seeing who's in which crew. Well, here's the Batman crew for today. As you can see, the Dark Knight himself from the Back to Gotham box set is present there in the spiky version of his uh, costume on the on the right there. Um, as a sidekick, we're going with Batwoman today. She's probably the most powerful non-Batman character you can take in a Batman crew. So she does eat up the points, but she is fast, she's armoured, she hits hard, and she does various things around the board. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I really wanted to get some use out of her again today in a normal crew as opposed to using her in the Bat Family team. Uh, as you can also see there's four re re you know, regular cops so to speak, three of which we've seen plenty of times before from the Bat to Gotham crew including Officer Merkel there with his uh, really useful riot gun and uh, yes um, just across just next to uh, Batwoman you can see one of the cops from the Dark Knight Rises box set. I haven't actually had a chance to use them yet. Haven't actually had them painted for that long. Uh, so yes, uh, he's the, those ones tend to be a bit cheaper than the ones in Bat to Gotham but nonetheless still able to uh, carry their weight and put down suspect markers just as good as anyone else. In terms of purchasable war gear there's a smattering across the entire crew because there's plenty of funding left over. Um, you'll see some radios, some uh, a grapple gun here and there and uh, yeah bits and pieces but I'll go into them as we go through the game if they become relevant. I'm not going to, I've realised that spending a lot of time explaining who's got what war gear when that model might get taken out nice and quickly doesn't tend to be a good use of my time it, or it may just the war gear may just never be used that's how it is with purchasable war gear sometimes it's effective sometimes it's not okay let's move on to the league of assassins and see who's turning up today and here they are the assassins all uh, Tyler Al Ghul there, uh, walking down that uh, portable archway. I love that model. Um, there, she's a very, very solid leader for her points. She's only 100 points, which is relatively cheap for a model that comes with um, combo on two of it and her paired, her paired swords. So yeah, she's also very good at moving suspect markers around the board, and uh, she gives benefits to her, the henchmen in her crew. So pretty much a complete package. Maybe she's not quite as tough as some of the others, but um, yeah, she's she's solid. 100 points bargain. Next to her you can see the Heretic, a model I haven't yet used before in any of my game reports. Um, basically uh, Mega Beat Stick is the best way to describe him. He is tough and he hits incredibly hard. He has no real movement bonuses. He doesn't in, you know, inspire the rest of the crew or anything but he doesn't need to. He just ends enemy models lives and uh, yeah he's very good at it. He's uh, desensitized much like uh, the rebirth version of Bane as we've seen before. You have to get through his uh, he can't be knocked out basically you have to get through his willpower and then you only then you can start chipping away at his his endurance he won't get knocked out on the way so very useful against batman crews i seem to think because um, the 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 relative lack of um you know blood damage in a batman crew might well mean that you have to go through both of his stat bars to uh his health bar, should I, say, should I say, to get to him. There, we'll see. Um, you can see on the far left, we've got uh, Cheshire. Again, another model I haven't used, a free agent for the League of Assassins. She's uh, powerful in her own right, relatively cheap, and uh, not particularly a large and imposing model, but poisons her shtick, and uh, she'll... Uh, she has many bonuses to do with that, so we'll we'll see how that goes. And uh, looking forward to getting some use out of her. In terms of henchmen, I'm leaning rather heavily on the League acolytes rather than the assassins in this particular game. I love the League acolyte models. What can I say? I've got both the archers this time since I haven't used them that much. And we can see the guy leaping from the shadows with the sword. I think that model's great too. Uh, so I wanted to use him as well. He's pretty powerful as well. Uh, in terms of purchasable war gear, is a tiny bit here and there on the two guys with the bows uh, just to help them maneuver around the board a bit better or deploy uh, the, the vast majority of the war gear is all on that guy leaping with the sword we've got a venom dose on him a grapple gun combat braces you name it he's pretty much got it he's uh, he's got you know he's uh, he's going to be looking to uh, do some instant damage at some point he might not last too long 
but he'll uh, he's tricked out shall we say um, there's a lot of funding available in the League of Assassins crew and Talia gives you even more so right let's move on get on to setup as yet I don't know who's going where but uh, let's see what's going on okay deployment is now complete and plunder was the card drawn for deployment zone so i'll just bring that into focus a little bit more uh there you go if you want to read it but basically that explains why there might be a couple of suspect markers already deployed on the board and one over there okay let's go on to which models are where we'll start with the league of shadows since they're in front of me you can see uh, the falconry archer has uh, moved forward he's got undercover training there so he can move a bit a bit further out of deployment zone this guy has the hidden rule so he could uh, sneak it he could hide anywhere out of uh, line of sight which he certainly is there and uh, so he's ready to jump out of the shadows this is uh, league acolyte number one actually i think yes one uh talia herself has moved uh, has deployed down here on top of the sewer marker and the two free uh, the two specials so uh what should we say cheshire and uh, the heretic are deployed in the park okay uh, ready to move forwards and hopefully dominate <laughs> um the Batman crew, you can see Batman is deployed at the back here and um, he, two of the policemen next to him. You can see Batwoman up on the rooftops there ready to swoop down. She has the aerial combat ability which gives her benefits if she changes altitude uh, during the course of uh, her turn. And uh, yes, there's Officer Merkel at the back ready to move forwards with his riot gun and his grapple gun. <laughs> um, and finally, GCPD Detective also has the hidden rule. He uh, deployed at the back here, ready to call, run interference and whatnot from the middle table. Okay, uh, cards are drawn. We're ready to start turn number one. Okay, the first raise the plan and take the lead phases are both complete. I can report that the League of Shadows have the initiative for the turn. They're in black there, four to two in their favor. Okay, in terms of cards played from the hands for the first phase, uh, the League of Assassins have played from the shadows, which we've seen plenty of times before for two victory points. They have nominated Officer Merkel for death. If he is the first model that they take out this turn, they'll score two points nice and easy and on the uh, quite the opposite on the Batman side for two points also die hard ah, get it in focus Lee there we are uh, there's the text seen this also plenty of times before they have chosen Batwoman uh, if she's still alive or not KO'd by the end of the turn they'll score two points for that uh, so yeah we'll see how that pans out in terms of um, other shenanigans you can see that there's a, a point of stun damage by each of the two leaders they've each actually tried to manipulate each other's group uh, gangs in order to see who's actually going to activate um talia tried to get batman to be the last model on his side to activate and she failed because he easily passed his willpower batman in instead tried to influence this uh, acolyte to have to move first and he succeeded so this acolyte has to move first for the League of Assassins so that will be the first model to go quickly I'll go through who's got audacity for the turn on the League side you've got falconry archer there uh, the acolyte with the sword Talia herself and Cheshire all have um, audacity on in terms of the Batman crew Batman of course has one as does officer Merkel who's marked for death uh, Batwoman has one and GCPD cop 2 there also uh, the lady with the taser also has audacity okay well let's enough talking let's get on with uh, some movements and activations well, manipulated as he was by the world's greatest detective, this League Acolyte went first for the League of Shadows. Uh, he was on the rooftop of the GCPD building, as you might remember. He moved across using his normal movement. He was inspired, despite, so despite not having audacity, um, he was within proximity to Talia Gould enough that he could put down a suspect marker of his own. And that concludes the first activation of the game. Officer Merkel kicked things off for the Batman crew. He uh, was down here at the beginning. He did have a grapple gun, however, and he did have audacity. So, but the first thing he did was to uh, use his riot gun on the falconry assassin here, despite um, 
the assassin being out of uh, the co under the cover of darkness, that did mean that uh, Merkel still had one dice and it duly came up a five, which was enough to hit the assassin for two stun damage. Just nice to get that out there. Um, he was uh, Officer Merkel was has a radio, sorry, so he does have inspiration from Batman. So he, with his audacity and he, so his special movement action were used to get up to here, and he used his spare um, tactical action to put down a suspect marker, which as you can see is a snitch, which if I I grab the old card for it. Sorry, I did. I left it behind. What an idiot! We will see that it's one we've seen a billion times before. It's a staple of the Batman crew and any other cut crew that can take it. Basically, um, yes. There's the text, but. Basically, if this snitch marker is still here at the end of the turn with no enemies within four inches of it, then uh, yeah, that will score three lovely points for the Batman crew. We've seen that a lot. Okay, uh, it also puts Officer Merkel quite far out of harm's way, they, the Batman crew hopes, of course, um, because uh, he's been marked for death, and so there's two victory points riding on him for the League of Assassins if he can get taken out, but he's a uh, bit, bit, bit far out of the way at the moment. Well, League Acolyte 1 took his duties very seriously. Uh, just as Officer Merkel thought he might have been safe, turned out that uh, League Acolyte 1 has also got tricked out with a grapple gun. So from all the way down here, he activated with audacity and uh, used his prodigious movement and the grapple gun to get up here next to uh, Officer Merkel. He took his ve uh, League Acolyte took his Venom dose as well and uh, has, has the sneak attack rule. So as he came from out somewhere out of line of sight at the beginning of his movement, Officer Merkel could not put efforts in to try and reduce the incoming attack dice pool. So with the free efforts granted by the Venom Dose, put one extra in himself just to add a little bit more spice into it. Um, he managed to get three hits through on Officer Merkel in the ensuing attack, causing a massive six points of blood damage, which will kill Officer Merkel, unfortunately. And, uh, and that's sufficient to score blood for blood from the League's hand, which is a two victory points. Uh, inflict a casualty in melee six inches away from any of your suspects with a model with the assassin trait. Well, the assassins being in the League of Assassins, this model has the assassin trait. <laughs> it's also far enough away from the suspect markers to, uh, to satisfy this, so that's two instant points. That will also score the... Uh, what is it? Yes, the from the shadows card from the beginning of the turn during the end phase, and also it can test the snitch marker. So uh, pretty good work there from League Acolyte One, but plenty of the turn left to go in order to uh, mess around with who's going to be doing what. Carrying on with henchmen, uh, the Batman crew decided that GCPD detective needed to go next. Uh, he was over here in the in the shadows of the alleyway. He decided he was going to move out, and uh, he he had inspiration because he has a radio, which allows him to be um, inspired by Batman from anywhere on the board. Really handy piece of kit that for GCPD involved crews. And uh, yes, he. Uh, used his manipulate action to reveal the suspect marker for the league which was nearby as a detective with a detective trait he can do so from up to three inches away which allowed him to do that rather than just base contact really really handy ability that in practice and yeah because he did that he was able to play and score comb through everything as an objective for two victory points simple enough and reveal an enemy suspect marker it allows them also to cycle their deck a bit more which is really 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 useful okay uh, so two points on the board for the gcpd and batman let's uh, carry on the league went with cheshire next and uh, she simply moved forward she had audacity can't be inspired as a because she's a free agent but yes yeah, so giving her audacity enabled her to put down this suspect marker here and it is sufficiently close to the batman crew suspect to play under their noses for two victory points very simple one again place a suspect marker within four inches of an enemy suspect marker nice and simple and easily scored in this situation can be frustrating when the opponents refuse to put down suspect markers but not the case today Agent 2, aka the cop from the uh, Dark Knight Rises box set, was next to activate for the Batman crew, and uh, he had a fairly simple turn. He didn't have audacity, but he was inspired by Batman, so he moved across from the cover of the Batmobile into, uh, well, over here, and put down a suspect marker. Nice and simple. Also played as an objective from the hand, I'll just reach back and get it, is uh, wait for backup for the Batman crew. Two points, lots of text, not sure we've seen it before, but basically uh, we nominated this policeman 
Cameron and uh, decided that if he could uh, stay by this board edge on our left here for you know um, for the countdown to uh, to run out which is uh, each successive models activation the counter will go down by one I rolled a six for the number of activations that need to go for it so uh, six turns and uh, yes uh, if he, if this guy's still within four inches of this board edge after six more activations there'll be two victory points scored for the Batman crew lots of cards with timers on them or waiting for the end of the turn oof I'm wondering uh, how I'm gonna keep track the heretic the clone of Damian Wayne incidentally activated for the League of Shadows and uh, just moved took impaired movement to jump over the fence just to get into the center of the board for future turns he's next to that sewer marker is he planning on using it bug it if I know um, but it does give him more options for the future uh, he didn't have audacity so that completes his turn Batwoman activated for the Batman crew. Uh, she engaged her grapple gun to enable her to to, jump, to ignore the um, impaired movement for jumping over this little gap just here in between the two buildings. And uh, she moved into combat to take some revenge on the uh, League, of Assass uh, League of Assassins Acolyte. As you can see, he was knocked out. She had to put three effort in, so even despite her aerial combat roll, it gives her plus one to hit with her attack rolls and her strength rolls. Um, she did need it. His combat braces um, really helped. He actually nullified every, he, he managed to pass every single defense roll, but it was not enough. Two hits got through, which enabled Batwoman to knock him out. He he was really uh, in a bad position because any efforts he put in made him even closer to going unconscious. So uh, yeah, it wasn't it was never likely that he'd survive. But he put in a really good attempt, but not to be. Um, Unfortunately, because Batwoman used her grapple gun, she didn't. She no longer had her special action, so she couldn't arrest him. Um, however, it was sufficient for uh, the Batman crew to play Dirty Job for one point from their hand. It's a generic card, just nice to put in there if you've got a chance. For one point, it means you can take out an immortal and still score just that one point. Never know, might be might be important at the end of the turn. But uh, yes, uh, this guy's unconscious, and uh, yeah, we're going to carry on. Both sides losing models now. League Acolyte with the Falcon here. Love this model, incidentally. Uh, did I say that before? He activated next, and uh, he was up uh, on top of the scaffolding. He uh, he was inspired by Talia Ghul and had Audacity, but the first thing he did, he used his freebie manipulation action to put down this suspect marker here. He then uh, used his special action to use his Falcon to be able to spy the GCPD detective. So within 16 inches, basically, it means he could ignore cover and line of sight for the person shooting, which is just as well, because that girder there was really getting in his way. Um, he used his uh, one-off poison arrow on the GCPD detective and uh, yes, managed to get one hit through which was sufficient to do two blood damage but also the poison effect which will last for the rest of the game on this poor chap here. Um, having done so, he used his movement action just to jump down onto the uh, the planks and move into cover behind the crates. And that's it really, that's his turn, not bad at all. GCPD Cop 2, the lady with the uh, Taser, sorry. She activated next. She had audacity. She moved up from behind the uh, Batmobile to the fence and proceeded. To, she was given a whistle from purchasable equipment, obviously a very powerful whistle. It enables her to use the stop rule, and she did so on uh, Cheshire. Um, an opposed willpower test was then failed by Cheshire, thus giving her the halted rule. Um, it basically, for the purpose of the rest of the turn, she's at minus one defense, but more permanently, she's at minus four movement the next time she actually, actually moves. Really useful that minus four movement counter for the Batman crew there on her, because uh, it will stop her from jetting around quite so much. Right, uh, not many more models to go, so let's see what's going to happen next. Talia finished the turn for her crew, and uh, she just moved up a little bit up the way and put down a suspect marker. Having done so, she played We Cannot Be Defeated from the hand of the league and uh, that's played in this term but uh, played in this phase sorry but scored at the end so they need to have at least three friendly suspects in play that are within six inches of each other and uh, this one this one and this one certainly do meet those criteria so there you go it's uh, it will it doesn't score yet there's still a little bit the batman crew can do to stop it uh, but also from the hand as, an, as a resource played uh, the daughter of the demon talia's signature card for two resource points so you know it's going to be good uh, there's a lot of text there but basically all friendly suspects within 20 inches of um, talia here become what's called imminent threat markers it means they still remain suspect markers in all respects i've marked them with tiddlywinks 
So uh, sue me because I didn't actually make any imminent threat markers myself because I didn't know however many I'd need, etc, etc. Um, but yes, these still function as suspect markers. It's just in order to remove these or reveal them, more to the point, if the Batman crew wants to reveal these suspect markers, they need to get rid of one of their own suspect markers in order to do so as well. Pretty hardcore. Oh, I need to mark the one next to her. I'll do that and then we'll carry on with the turn. And to round off the turn's activation, Batman himself went, both crews leaving their leaders till last, as is quite a pattern really sometimes in uh, this game, in the first turns at least, because um, I guess it gives the chance for the crew to get inspired by their nearby leaders who deploy next to them before the leaders just jet off on their own. So anyway, never mind. Uh, Batman used his normal movement, did not engage his back claw. Um, he was actually behind the Joker mobile. Um, at the moment, uh, because when Batwoman up here knocked out this guy, uh, the League Acolyte, she is able to use her interrogation ability to move Batman a bit further forwards. He was unable to walk over here and use his detective trait to reveal the suspect marker for the League that was here. The one they played and was one of the, th the three that they needed to uh, to score we cannot be defeated that from Talia last turn. Of course he has, it was an imminent threat marker, he had to reveal the suspect marker of his, he had to remove the friendly suspect marker which was next to him but small price to pay to deny those uh, victory points he reasoned and also to score again comb through everything for two victory points from the uh, Batman crew's hand. It was a, you know, so it's still an object, sus still a suspect marker, sorry pardon my uh, fudging my words and uh, yeah that so that scores two instant victory points and also will probably deny those three for the league as uh, those other two for the league as well so very important does leave Batman a little bit exposed in the middle of the board with the uh, enemies on many sides but uh, he's Batman he's good at that although I am getting slight flashbacks to that two-face game where he got gunned down almost immediately but hopefully we're not gonna see any assassins toting long rifles and Tommy guns anytime soon Okay, and I've just completed the recount phase, i.e. phase four, for the first turn. So we just completed that. And uh, in terms of damage, um, or every model that had some stun damage removes one point of it. The League Acolyte up here did not have to test willpower to see if he came round from knocked out, because Tali Al Ghul's mind-controlled uh, henchman automatically recover from being knocked out. So uh, this guy's just knocked down instead. He's automatically come round, which is really powerful ability. Uh, to be perfectly honest, henchmen have a habit of staying down for ages in this game sometimes. Um, in terms of other things, oh yes, GCPD Detective failed his poison roll and uh, yes, yeah, so he took another point of blood damage, so he's on three points of blood damage now, nasty. That may continue on or maybe he'll die earlier than that, I don't know. <laughs> um, or he might, he might survive the rest of the game and live to a long life, I don't know. Um, for cards that were scored, um, Batman removing that suspect marker f made that meant that we cannot be defeated failed for the League of Assassins, so no points there. The snitch marker for Batman crew is still within um, four inches of this League of Assassin here, so uh, yep, yeah, that that fails. The snitch doesn't doesn't come off for them either. Um, cards played from the beginning of the turn, for, however, from the shadows, as we found out, did score since Officer Merkel died, and he was the first model to do so on the Batman crew side. So that's two points there for the league. And Batwoman did survive indeed. Uh, so uh, there's Die Hard that scores for the Batman crew. Otherwise, we had cards also played from the uh, the hands as well in the fourth phase. Secure the perimeter came out for the Batman crew. Two points, uh, easy enough. Remove two friendly suspect markers from within two inches of board edge. There were two over here. They're both gone now, so there's two points for the Batman crew. And finally, Eradicate the Order for the League of Assassins came out for three mighty points. Um, you have more suspects than your opponent in play, and they certainly do, even more so after those two came off. And uh, yeah, so it's another, that's three points. Both sides taking lumps out of each other and scoring lots and lots of points, uh, cycling their decks and getting through things really well. Looking forward to seeing how things go next turn. Okay, well, let's find out. Okay, turn twos take the lead and raise the plan phases are both finished with now. Uh, in terms of the initiative, the League of Assassins has it once again with a 5-2 to two win on the dice there, so they'll be going first again, pretty possibly crucially. Both the uh, both Talia Al Ghul and Batman, both the leaders failed in their attempts to manipulate each other's models into having to move first or last or whatever, So, uh, but they did put effort into those attempts, so that's where those stun damage came from. In terms of the cards played, from 
the Shadows came out once again for the league for two victory points and they are targeting GCPD Detective. He's quite poorly at the moment, he's been poisoned so he's, he's kind of flagging, he's probably a bit of a soft target so that's why they're thinking two victory points riding on him is a good thing. Um, in terms of Audacity Counters, there is one for The Heretic, Talia, Cheshire and Parkour league of assassin acolyte up here with the bow uh, for the batman crew we gave one to batman batwoman the uh, agent down here and the gcpd cop down here didn't give one to gcpd detective because he's been marked for death so probably thought he wasn't going to last long didn't want to waste an audacity token boohoo for him okay let's get on and uh, see how the turn pans out the league to go first and no restrictions on who which model has to be activated first league acolyte with falcon i think he's uh league acolyte number three from the box set um activated first he did not have audacity he did not need audacity he just uh, used his bow with his one action and shot the gcpd detective nice and simple really um did a critical hit not that it matters and that will kill gcpd detective he only had two points of endurance left so uh that's a shame for him. And uh, yes, that will easily secure the points for from the shadows as just played. Okay, that, con that completes the uh, activation for this guy. Batwoman first for uh, the Batman crew. Uh, she activated on top of the rooftops where she uh, swiftly, easily knocked out the, re-knocked out, sorry, should I say, the acolyte up here. She then used her special action to arrest him and take him off. Unfortunately, did not have the get them off the streets card. Crucially, was really looking to cycle the deck for that, but just didn't get it. And in the end, she just had to do it. Otherwise, uh, she he'd probably get up and move around and be more annoying because he, he just gets back up from being knocked out automatically every turn. So uh, had to get rid of him while he was unconscious next to her. So he's gone. She then used her movement. Remember, she has a back cape, so she doesn't take any damage from falling. It basically allowed her to move as the crow flies 10 inches. It got her into combat, base contact, should I say, with falconry archer here. Um, um, it does stop him from using his bow. It also means that maybe she can smack him next turn and then move away. I don't know. We'll see. It's better to be in contact with an enemy with a gun or firearm or ranged weapon, probably better to say, than not in this in this game. Uh, didn't score any cards, but uh, well, continues to turn and uh, did some stuff. The heretic went for uh, the League of Assassins next and he uh, thundered into combat with Batman. He had Audacity, he used that to activate his unstoppable trait which would have meant that Batman had to make two successful defense rolls to, to block one hit from uh, this guy. Um, he then put an attack, he put maximum effort in and Batman matched that um, with his own efforts. Uh, overall no damage was done. Um, interestingly Bat Armor which, ignore, which means that opponents don't get strength dies, pretty much cancels out a lot of the benefits that uh, the heretic would get uh, for his, you know, for his massive sword there. Um, it re-rolls the strength blow roll, which he doesn't get. He could have had uh, plus one to it, you know, to his strength die roll, which he doesn't get, <laughs> and uh, all sorts of things. But yeah, um, and obviously you can't block strength die rolls either. So if it had come up, which was very likely on a two plus for the heretic, he's one of the strongest. Well, he got one of the best strength stats in the game, shall we say? And uh, yeah, it didn't affect him because of the bat armor. Oh well. Uh, but nonetheless, so no hits got through in the end. It, one hit did, and Batman passed a few defense saves to block it out. And uh, so yes, yeah, just the efforts to show as a, as um, any uh, trace of the combat's passing. But uh, three stun damage so far accrued on Batman. You know, it might have, it affects him more than it does the heretic. Certainly, no cards scored, however, in this activation. Well, the Batman crew um, went waded in next for their activation. Went with Agent Number what, Two, sorry. And uh, yes, he's uh, he stayed put. He did have audacity, but he decided he wasn't going to need to use it at all. He just decided to put down a suspect marker. And as you can see, the ubiquitous snitch has once again come out for three victory points. Uh, we saw it earlier. Hopefully, this time it's a bit better. Uh, guarded or just harder to get to for the league certainly the league's fastest model has already has already left the board so uh, that should help okay uh, that can that completes um, his activation however I should point out that wait for backup from last turn has long since scored sorry my mistake this guy's been patiently over here all that time so two points straight into the Batman crews um, scored pile okay right now let's move on and see what's what 
Talia Al Ghul next, and she uh, also decided she was going to attack the Batman whilst uh, after the heretic had uh, made him caught, do put some effort in. She ov she obviously efforted herself, and she uh, she forced Bruce to do so as well. Um, that puts Batman on seven points of uh, willpower used up out of his nine. He has willpower for days, but he can't do it forever. And uh, yes. Uh, so she then has Weapon Master, and of course her strength die doesn't apply due to the Bat Armor's always on ability. But nonetheless, she managed to. Um, she is overwhelming, which reduces his um, defense rolls by one. She managed to get two hits through on him, so you can see two bl uh, four blood there. Sorry. So the Batman is seriously hurt. Well slightly seriously hurt he has uh, he's got nine points of endurance so he's almost halfway towards death but he's very close to going unconscious either way he's a powerful model that can't afford to be hamstrung too much by crude damage and that seems to be what's happening to him at the moment but that's two of the heavy hitters from the league of assassins who've had a go at him this turn and uh, they haven't taken him out yet and he's still got to move um, in terms of the cards um, talia played we cannot be defeated we saw that last turn two points it applies to um, if the if the uh, league of assassins have at least three friendly suspects in play within six inches of each other in the end phase sorry why is it not focusing there you go then uh, they'll score this so this will stay in play until the end phase and we'll see they currently have these three all within six inches of each other Tali was moving them around using her scheming ability during the raise the plan phase just in case you wanted to know uh, right that concludes Talia's turn and Batman next, um, activated for his own crew, of course. Uh, he used his uh, grapple gun and um, his usual quite high movement to move up onto the scaffolding and reveal the suspect marker for the league that was there in order to try and break the hold of the We Cannot Be Defeated card that was going to score at the end of the turn. He also managed in doing so to score uh, comb through everything. Here it is, from the hand, for two points, just like last turn. Reveal enemy suspect marker, very useful indeed. Um, because it was still marked as imminent threat, he had to get rid of the uh, Batman suspect marker from up here in order to do so, but again, judging it worth it. There's only one Batman suspect marker on the board now, and that's the one which is currently a snitch over here, so that'll be fun, that's fun, isn't it? And how you can go from having quite a lot out to very few, in, the, in the, just through some... Uh, cunning cards. Um, finally he used his Batlings which is his own shooting weapon for this version of the Batman and uh, he threw them at Talia. He, uh, Talia is an acrobat, she took out the uh, strength die by using one effort and then one effort got through, when one, one hit got through from the remaining two dice so that's uh, three points of stun altogether from that particular attack including her effort. That puts her one willpower away from going unconscious herself. Um, could have been cheeky if he'd got both those hits in she would have gone unconscious which would have been very embarrassing for her but uh, it was not to be but she's one point off of uh, that pop that on her stat card and uh, yes that continues the uh, the game uh, now I think I think that's uh, that's his turn yes right let's move on Cheshire activated for the League of Assassins and uh, despite being slowed from last turn she was still had enough movement to get through the the, fen the gate here sorry and uh, attack the GCPD officer who'd had the temerity to uh, whistle at her <laughs> and uh, yes it was uh, a bit of a bloodbath she used her poison sigh which she has combo with and uh, got all the hits through and uh, yeah not enough stops so six points of damage to the GCPD officer which uh, will kill her doesn't score any cards at all for the league but it's uh, another model down for the uh, GCPD and Batman crew and there's only three of them left they're halfway down okay uh, there's just the league to go now I think just this guy over here and we'll see what he gets up to. Right, you can see Lee Gakalite with the uh, parkour style um, has activated now and just to finish off the turn and he moved down here. He has climbing claws but I'm sure there's a sequence of falls he could have easily made. He has plenty of movement to get down there is what I'm saying. And uh, he put down a suspect marker on top of that little skip there, the mini skip as I like to call them. And uh, yes, that fulfills his activation. He has audacity but he can't do anything else for the time being. Right, let's go to the recount phase and uh, clean up. 
Okay, the recount phase all completed and uh, easy to report that the snitch over in the far side has scored this turn for the GCPD and Batman. So that's three lovely points for them. Uh, but the League of Assassins have really hit hard this turn. Of course, uh, we know that from the Shadow scored from right at the beginning when the GCPD detective bought the farm. And uh, We Cannot Be Defeated has been brought back online for two victory points because there are still, there's now uh, three suspect markers in uh, six inches of each other so nice there and of, and again um, eradicate the order came out from the League of Assassins hand in the fourth phase you can see their scores at the end and played at the end and they've still got way more suspect markers than the GCPD and Batman crew have so uh, yeah another three points for the League of Assassins they have had a heavy scoring turn it's now uh, turn three we're only halfway through the game and both sides well the Batman crew's down to half models and uh, yeah, both sides have been scoring heavily though, so uh, I don't know where this is going to go next. Okay, turn three's first two phases are both done. I uh, can quickly reveal that the Batman crew now have the initiative with the six there, so they'll be going first if they want to. Um, yeah, oh sorry, that Lazarus Pit came off next turn. Incidentally, if you noticed the Lazarus Pit, that was just put down as a way to cycle the League deck. <laughs> nothing, nothing, uh, unfortunately, nothing amazing happened with it. It's a nice, nice little counter though. Very useful when it actually comes off, but you can only put it in contact with a suspect marker and there weren't any in the middle. But uh, never mind. So, uh, in terms of cards played, there were none played in either phase for both either crew. So, uh, yes, no, 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 no one marked for death. No one uh, needing to be a diehard or anything like that this turn. Just uh, cards to be played from the hand uh, for, during the course of the turn. Um, in terms of audacity, oh yes, Batman managed to uh, manipulate things so that this League Acolyte with the Falcon has to be the first to activate for the League this turn. So that's interesting. Talia unfortunately failed in her a, a chance to do that. Audacity counters are such that uh, Batman's crew has one for each model. So Batman, Batwoman, and the policeman who's left they don't have any more audacity tokens uh, don't have any more models sorry to give audacity tokens for the league they had some choice they gave one to talia and the heretic and cheshire of course and the assassin over here gets one too okay let's move on to the uh, actions Okay, agent number two kicked things off for the third turn. Um, he activated with audacity. He uh, first of all revealed the suspect marker, which was next to him, the one which was the snitch last turn, and turned it into valuable commodities. We've seen this many times before, but for three points, there's the marker. It was going to go on his stack card. He has to be alive and holding it by the end of the game. It, well, a model on his side has to be holding it by the end of the game to score. Very dangerous given the proximity of Cheshire, who's just wiping the blood off her sides right now but uh, yeah it's uh, it got a desperate times call for desperate measures and, and Cheshire can't go yet until uh, Falcon dude has had a go anyway so uh, yeah well that's that and uh, that concludes his turn well the Falcon guy had to go next I'm gonna call him the Falcon guy for now uh, he activated he did not have audacity but he was nonetheless inspired by Talia over here and uh, he moved away from Batwoman as is a smart thing to do clever assassin and put down a suspect marker just there didn't score any points doesn't uh, trigger any cards or anything but that does conclude his turn after this the League of Assassins will be able to choose whoever they want to go next well, Batwoman to the rescue of uh, this GCPD cop anyway. And um, yes, she activated next for the Batman crew. She was over here, she engaged her bat claw to uh, move up and over and into combat with Cheshire. And as you can see, it was quite an effective one. Uh, both sides efforted as much as they could. Uh, Batwoman also played from the hand as a, re as an, as a resource, sorry, dirty job the generic card which uh, gave her for one resource point gives her an extra die it does mean that she takes that one point of blood damage but the extra die was useful very useful indeed um, that combined with the um, bonuses she gets for attacking when she uses her back claw then uh, was all was all too much for the uh, for Cheshire there despite the fact that her sigh was defensive it was just too many hits getting through and yes it was sufficient to knock her out again can't arrest the model because uh, 
she's um, used her special action as the back claw, but hey, you know, it's the penalty you pay for all that lovely movement, I suppose. Uh, but Dirty Job came out of the hand again, this time as, a, as an objective for one point. So yes, two Dirty Jobs in the hand. <laughs> Sounds a bit gross, that. But uh, yes, two Dirty Job cards, and one of them scored, one used as a resource. Okay, uh, let's move on. Okay, League Acolyte up next, uh, Guy Parkour Guy. Um, he activated with Audacity, he used his special action to activate good aim on himself, and uh, shot at Batman with his Innovating Arrow, which was a success. Nicely done. And uh, for one hit, two points of blood on the ever, ever, da well, ever more damaged Batman, who's also got Innovating 2, which takes his effort limit down to zero for the next time because of the accrued damage and that, of course. Uh, yeah, yeah, he then uh, used his movement action to move over here and uh, complete his turn. Nothing else he could really do, and uh, Batman's creaking a bit. Well, Batman finished off the turn for his crew. Um, he was just down here on the scaffolding. He surprised everyone <laughs> by uh, moving up to the top and putting down another snitch marker, the third snitch to come out, although maybe only the second to score. Uh, yes, there's not an awful... Yes, uh, rather than... Uh, jetting down to punch someone. He's had a very inoffensive sort of game, but he has been scoring points and denying them quite effectively as well. So, uh, yeah, I mean, three points is three points, whether you get it for hitting someone or for putting down a suspect marker. And yeah, yeah, that's very useful for, for their crew. Um, does how It does mean that it's also harder for anyone to get at him to finish him off as well. And he's got that movement for the last turn saved up in his back claw. So there we go. I just decided to complete the League of Assassins moves now um, because there was very little left for them to do apart from move around a bit. But um, yes, yeah, so it was just Talia and the Heretic to go. They both moved up the street to sort of either cut off this uh, policeman with his loot or move it to threaten the Batwoman. There's no point chasing after Batman. He's got his back claw for next turn and uh, they didn't have sufficient movement to uh, cancel out the snitch he put down either, so there we are. Uh, what Talia did do though, she moved on top of the Joker Mobile and uh, she played multiple threats. It's a card I don't think we've seen before. It's a lot of text and it's three points, but it's so three points can't really be ignored for the sake of brevity. Um, but yes, there's the text, but basically um, she put down a suspect marker and um, yes, but also she uh, puts down a numerical counter on any of the uh, on all of the other suspect markers that she's got so as you can see there's little numbers on them all they're dotted around and uh, yes at the end of the turn I'll roll a dice if um, the number on the dice matches any of the numbers on the suspect markers this car scores for three points and as this there are currently six suspect markers down for the league each number accounted for this will definitely score but we'll get there in a second when we do the uh, recount phase I'll go there now Okay, all said and done now in the recount phase. Importantly, Cheshire failed to recover from being knocked out, so uh, she's still down for the last turn. We're going into turn four next, remember, so uh, she's out, she won't recover. Uh, for card scored, the Snitch obviously scores for three points straight away for the Batman crew, lovely for them. Multiple threat threats, sorry, not threats, threats with a TH uh, scores for the League of Assassins. I said that just now. Also, from the League of Assassins' hand, do not deviate from the plan came out. Uh, it's played and scored in this fourth phase as you can see and yes the uh, the Batman crew did not reveal any suspect markers for the league this turn first turn they haven't and uh, the league did put at least one down over there and so that's two points for them so yeah yeah there you go um, into the into the last turn it's on a knife edge I genuinely haven't been keeping track of who's winning <laughs> um, so let's uh, let's go for it Turn four. First two phases are done. And uh, yes, Batman has the initiative once again. And as you can see, I put down from the shadows again from the hand of the League of Assassins for two points. No big prizes for guessing which unfortunate model got chosen to be the one who's going to die first. He's the one holding the loot after all, and also the very, by very much the softest target. Despite not having been attacked so far this game, he's still an easier target than either Batwoman or a very badly damaged Batman from over there. So uh, yes, there we are. Um, 
in terms of audacity counters you, every model on the board's got one now neither side has sufficient models active to actually have a choice <laughs> um, yeah that's basically it I think uh, yeah no other cards played so uh, we're gonna get on see so you can score those last turns crucial points I know there's a few in the offing for both sides well, Batman took the first uh, activation of the last turn. He had his back claw back online, so he used it to move and swing with the greatest of ease all the way onto the pile of boxes in the middle of the road. GC uh, Gotham City uh, Municipal Projects being as efficient as usual, I see. And uh, yes, he used his Batlings to target Talia Al Ghul again, who uh, again acrobated away the strength die to give herself as much chance as possible but uh, one hit did get through that takes her up to uh, well nine willpower lost now and uh, that's enough to knock her out which is a bit of a blow for the League of Assassins since they really wanted uh, her activation there with audacity would have been very useful for the turn but uh, hey uh, but more punishingly as well Batman's back to Arkham uh, card came out as well uh, for three points and it's simple as make the opponent's boss KO or remove it as a casualty and they've just made Talia KO indeed so three big points there for the Batman crew okay uh, let's see what the League of Assassins are going to do about it the heretic up next and he easily walked around or maybe he just jumped over the uh, Batmobile and smashed the uh, poor unfortunate police guy into in twain shall we say lots of damage that's the efforts there the stun damage but it was not uh, it was all for naught this uh, loot marker is now back out in the open as this policeman is removed from the board and also um, the heretic played we cannot be defeated from the hand of the League of Assassins it's the one we've seen a couple of times before have at least three friendly suspects in play within six inches and these three here that scored before uh, there it is um, are all still there so in the end phase, if they're all still like that, and there's very little the Batman crew can do about it, that'll be another two points scored. So uh, yes, it's starting to get away. Okay, the Batwoman went for the last activation for the Batman crew, and uh, she first of all arrested the knocked out Cheshire. There's her knocked out counter, just to remind you of where she was. And doing so, she finally was able to play get them off the streets for three victory points. Uh, we've seen this lots of times, arrest a model, easy peasy. And uh, yes, she did. She has the arrest ability on her stack card. Very useful to have on someone who hits so hard. Uh, but yes, uh, that's caused that. She then moved over and picked up the loot, which had just been dropped by the police officer. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's on her as well. I don't think there's much the Lee can do about that either. She just hasn't taken any actual damage, uh, any actual like blood damage yet. But yeah. Um, We'll move on and see what the league can do. It's just their activations to go, so I'll probably uh, do theirs and then summarise it for the end. Yeah, the only thing of real note, to be perfectly honest, from the league's remaining turn was that this uh, acolyte here moved down from the boxes and put down a suspect marker. Um, I did do some experimental shots with bows at uh, Batwoman, but there's no way they can do enough damage, given her bat armour, to actually... Uh, kill her and remove her and mean that she drops the loot so there's really nothing to be said about that he was too far away just just by inches to get up to the here and put down a suspect marker within four inches of the suspect of the batman crew suspect marker which would have scored another card but no it was not to be all he could do is that i'll go to the recount phase now to tidy up okay this game has been very eventful all the way through and that's carried on right up to the very last phase indeed uh, right well after the recount was all said and done the uh, it's established that the valuable commodities card will score for the batman crew there's another three points for them that takes them up to nine points i think scored this turn batman taking out tyler was three uh, batman um arresting Cheshire was three and then another three for valuable commodities that's not that's a mighty score on its own just consider then he had three models left and one of them got removed before they even had a chance that's really good but on the League of Assassins side as we know we cannot be defeated did score for them with these uh, little cluster of uh, three 
suspect markers. They definitely scored from the shadows because they killed the policeman first as nominated. They played do not deviate from the plan again in this phase. Um, the opponents didn't have a chance to remove a suspect marker this turn really and they placed that one at the end so two victory points for that. And finally eradicate the order came through at the last minute again to be played now in the fourth phase. Uh, scores now for three victory points. You have more suspect than your opponent in play and they have way more than three uh, way more suspects in play so uh, yeah that's seven victory points just played in the last just scored in the last phase for the league of assassins i have lost all semblance of counting but i can see two very big score piles for each side so i'm going to go to the uh the uh the the, the score piles now and do the final count and we'll see who's actually won this slaughter fest Right, well, I've got the uh, score pile for the law forces, the Batman crew in my hand first. Let's uh, see what they've got. So, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, eleven, uh, thirteen, sixteen, seventeen, twenty, twenty-three, twenty-six, twenty-nine victory points. Enough to wipe the floor on other days, but I just don't know now. Um, we'll see, I suppose. It could be a lot, it could be much closer than I think, or it could be uh, that both sides are miles apart and I've just been stupid all this time. But yeah, 29 points, that's a mighty score, considering how burgered their force is as well. Uh, okay, right, well, uh, let's go for the League of Assassins. Let's stop wasting time. So, two, three, four, six, nine. 11, uh, 13, 16, 18, 21, 24, 26, 28, and 30. Bloody hell. Okay, <laughs> 30 points to the League of Assassins. That's the highest score I think I've had, I think, on this on this channel anyway. Uh, 30 points plays 29. I I can't believe it. I didn't set this up. I, no, I just play this. Uh, wow. Those two crews were actually knocking lumps out of each other from the very first turn all the way through to the end and scoring points pretty much constantly. A good showcase for both as well, I think, because um, it just shows, I mean, the, the, the Batman crew can just carry on playing cards even when they are being battered in terms of their model count being dropped. They can still chuck out those cards, you know, to score points, um, even with relatively low model count. It's really well designed. Um, I guess it just represents their forces just never giving up and carrying on in the face of odds, you know. In another turn, even with similar damage, another game against another crew, 29 points would be a big score to beat. So quite often the Batman crew can win, even though it looks like on paper that they've, they've lost on the board. They've actually outscored sometimes comfortably. But the League of Assassins there, wow. They, if they can control the board, they can just keep on constantly chucking out those you know two point cards those three point cards every now and again you know with, with if they've got supremacy in terms of their suspect markers and they're rightly placed around the board they just keep this constant drain of points up and having cards which score when uh, your opponent loses models is really useful in this game as well because it's basically you get, you get two objectives in one because you want to kill enemies and you want to score points and sometimes they're mutually exclusive but not always for the league okay uh, wow that was a really, really, really fun game. I really enjoyed that. I don't think either side let themselves down. Both sides got good use out of their units. I'm going to shoot off now and get something to eat because I'm starving. <laughs> I'm Shield War 100. I hope you enjoyed this game. Please leave me a, uh, a like and a comment or whatever. Um, if you like this and you want to see others and you aren't subscribed, then please do so because then you'll see other battle reports that I put up in the future. I have got an awful lot of variety still to go. There's a lot of crews for this game and lots of combinations you can do within those crews. Okay, uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a really nice day. Ta-ta.